Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a special edition of the PropTech Ramble. This is the, the first of season three really, but this is a, a precursor to the start of the full ramble. Uh, we've been really busy, so apologies, we haven't got any out, but this is a special edition. Uh, I'm here with Matt Marson, who is the founder of Smart Building Bootcamp. Uh, he is also uh, a partner at Arcadis. Uh, Matt, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are the global smart sector leader uh, for technology uh, at Arcadis and the co-founder of Smart Building Bootcamp. So could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you've come from, and, and then I've got some specific questions about who you are and what you're doing and, and how Smart Building Bootcamp came about. Yeah, sure. So in terms of my day job at uh, Arcadis, that is basically to lead all the work that we do in the technology sector. So if that's uh, bringing data centers to market, supporting uh, e-commerce companies with their logistics hubs or some of the kind of workplace of the future stuff that say some of the software and, or internet companies are doing. Um, that's what we do, so kind of full stack service, project management, cost management, design and engineering, architecture, kind of any professional service involved yeah. with the built environment is what we're up to. And then now, uh, obviously with uh, trying to launch Smart Building Bootcamp, the sort of whole point of that really is um, to help educate the market on something that has been really difficult uh, to get moving. So we've probably got the, the problem whereby we've got building people who have never had to study anything techie in their lives before, yeah. having to make complex IT decisions on platforms, IoT devices, connectivity, with not much of a clue really as to how it all works. And then when they bring in support from the digital side of things, the folks who have coded those IoT platforms know exactly like what MQQT means, what it stands for, how like data is transferred. Um, they are met with a bunch of older systems that work very differently in the form of things like building management systems, lights, yeah. um, lifts, etc. And those two worlds do not come together. So the purpose of Bootcamp is to get those worlds to collide and for folks to have at least the kind of working knowledge of roughly how it all fits together to make some informed decisions given the amounts that folks are spending on capex to get the equipment in there in the first place and, and i think as well from the people that we work with as well within metricus is facilities managers and operations managers and the head of real estate for example or, or the head of workplace as you've said, they've been in buildings before with, with the systems they've had forever, but to get the data out, they need to put technology in. But uh, workplace and IT, technically, well, well, traditionally, I should say, rather than technically, in businesses, never the twain shall meet, right? So, but a, a lot of people now need to understand and need to know what's going on. Uh, it's something you and I have discussed at length for quite a long time, actually, um, just, just for people to know. <laughs> is we get asked about it a lot. When we're talking to facilities managers, I regularly get calls from facilities managers asking me, what does this mean? Someone's talking to me about this. So I think this couldn't come at a better time. You know, COVID has accelerated everything to do with smart buildings and digitization of buildings and indoor air quality and wellness. And do we need that building anymore? Can we reduce the cost of energy? Can we reduce the space that we need? Unless you know all of those component parts, it, it can be quite daunting, right? So, mm. Coming from coming from the old kind of FM world, so and plus the noise that's out there on the market, it's very difficult to trust what <laughs> vendors are telling you. It is. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of people selling the dream, but actually, it turns into a bit of a nightmare sometimes. But but if if you can give everyone an understanding, and an unbiased understanding of what the market means, what smart buildings are about, where they've come from, I I, I think it will help. I think it will help more people than we realise. So, I've got some specific questions for you. Oh, go for it. Hopefully. Oh, okay, fingers <laughs> crossed. So, I've got some specific questions here. So, so how did you get into the smart building industry? Yeah, it, it was probably whilst I was an analyst at uh, the management consulting firm Accenture. Yeah. Um, I had a degree in architecture and engineering, and obviously Accenture kind of knew everything about software, um, and it was just a bit of a punt really to see what would happen if we put the two things together. together. My first proper expert I've kind of brought into uh, a project that was looking at some heating, ventilation and air conditioning analytics for uh, Cisco, where the kind of 
the thing that we were going to do was take the data out of the building management system to look for a whole bunch of energy conservation measures for their campuses here in the UK and India. And uh, given my background, I was able to basically build the first batch of algorithms that had a bit of engineering to them, given all that data that we were sucking at. And yeah. we kind of grew that into um, a sort of reasonable kind of tens of millions uh, dollar business uh, that, you know, cash, yeah, <laughs> that, that we were doing in all sorts of countries for like some big Fortune 500 yeah. companies. And then um, had the opportunity, was given far too much money and responsibility <laughs> to build out what was Accenture's kind of flagship um, innovation building in Dublin called The Dock. Oh, yes. um, we spent about 26 million euros fitting out a 66,000 square foot building where it was just like throw everything in the kitchen sink at it to make it the world's most connected building. Yeah. And like IoT platforms didn't exist at the time. We were doing first of a kind integrations. You know, you could open meeting rooms with your signature dance move. Uh, you could locate all the marketing specialists at any one point. It had business Tinder. So if it, we've, it knew we were stood in front of a screen yeah. and you like space and I like drones, it'd say, hi, Michael and uh, Matthew, you should go make space drones. And the whole point was to use the building and all of the sort of digital services that we've built to find the gaps in people's interest yes. to make innovation yeah. happen. Oh, nice. And yeah, kind of went from there. And then uh, sort of next stop was at WSP uh, as head of smart places to build their advisory capability for everything smart buildings and cities um, from scratch. And now obviously at Arcadis to take on a, a broader remit. Nice. It's, and I think as fast as your career's gone, <coughs> And this space is moving, so it's quite helpful running in running in tandem. Uh, so, I I know the answer to this question, but it's 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 a great question to ask because I love the answer. What made you decide to set up Smart Building Bootcamp? Apart from the bits we've talked about and about lockdown and bread, I, you know, <laughs> what, what what made you set up Smart Building Bootcamp? Probably frustration, yeah, because it's just so difficult to get a project going because you have to spend the first however many months with your client, educating them on the fundamentals. Yeah. And I'm basically looking for something to shortcut that so we can like deliver value faster. People are making informed decisions that they can trust and so that you've got a better working relationship across the entire like value chain to get this thing done. Because there's nothing worse than the distrust and the sort of how unsure people are because it means that decisions don't get made, opportunities are missed, and everybody ends up with a rubbish outcome. And, and I think part of that comes from, because this is such an immature market, and I say this to people quite a lot, there's a lot of young tech companies and there's more and more coming out every day across the world, you know better than most. But this is not like the IT world, for example, where routing and switching have been around for 20 years. And someone says, here's a new voice over IP phone, or here's a new router or a new switch, and it's you know 100 gig instead of 10 gig. No brainer, know what that means, know how that works when you are trying to digitize a building that I, th I think it is much harder because IT generally aren't involved but the technology as you mentioned previously five minutes ago the technology we're talking about is completely different technology than the incumbents or the FMs or the, the engineers that the BMS engineers are, are used to so it's uh yeah and they don't want to move to it because they're in a brilliant <laughs> position when you're a BMS engineer that you can charge about a thousand pounds a point and yeah. then all of a sudden we've come along with a bunch of sensors and a piece of software we can have it done in a day probably for the same price as one point well and and also you're pulling out data and information that has always been kept in the dark room but you know it's kind of the black magic you know all the big bms providers i'm not going to name any of them but certified engineers it's in the black box you can't get it out as the customer but now you can get it out you can visualize it and lots of people can use that data right so that's yeah, it's hugely important. Or even if they do give you that capability, all they've done is build a fancy AR on the same old stuff that they've yeah. been selling for years, <laughs> and it's not quite fit for purpose. Yeah, no, I was at a, a new customer yesterday where they were saying we've just got a new interface, and it still looked like Windows ninety five. So it was it was an interesting one, but it was brand new. Uh, what can people gain from learning about smart building industry? I think it's all of the context for like your project and if you're involved in the design or the construction or operations, it's still something that's going to help. So the way that we've 
structured it is into three tracks. So firstly, it's physical, yeah. so that you can learn everything about the physical systems that's in the building, if that's what you can do for energy towards net zero, what it means for wellness and the data that could be captured, or even just some of the fundamental base build systems. It will give you the language and an understanding of how it works, so that at least when you go and like meet your vendors, you can be dangerous in terms of understanding like what's needed. Yeah. The second track is then digital, and that covers all the things that an IT person will come up and bamboozle you with. Um, you know, oh, it's it's big data VR in the cloud. <laughs> and you're like, okay, sounds and nice. And you need a data lake. Exactly. <laughs> and the purpose of that track is to go through what all that means yeah. so that when they come with all of their sort of technical stuff, you can appreciate like, okay, well, so this is what I'm going to get. This is how it works. And then you can make an informed decision as to whether or not to go with it. And then the third track is all of the kind of business side of thing, the contextual stuff, we yeah. called it trends, and it looks at what's going on and why you want to be on this bandwagon, how you build a business case to justify this uh, to the organization that you're working for. It talks a little bit about what this means for the FM industry. So loads of kind of content in there basically to make sure that you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And, and it crosses all the different kind of job titles as well, from FM to workplace to operations, to IT, so IT know one side, but they may not know the other. Exactly. So it, it covers all areas of someone in a building or that will touch smart buildings, whether it's workplace HR, like even finance, right? Because the finance people are buying sensors as opposed to a telephone or a router or a switch. Well, what does that sensor do? Well, it measures you know, capacity. Capacity of what? Well, counts people. Yeah. What, so it, I love it covers all the bases. I love that it, I, I, being Australian, I like this because it's simple, but it, it's very clear on what you're going to get at the end of doing the course. And, and I think for people who need to do CPD, uh, especially people in this space, I don't think you could find something that is as simple and as clear that gives you the output that you need at the end, right? To go and make some informed decisions or be, as you said, have a conversation with some you know, information behind you and that you can take with you and read off a description if you need to based on the, on the, the course itself. Thank you. So. And I think what, the thing I'm probably most proud of is that it answers some like difficult questions like what is productivity, how can you measure productivity leakage, how do you actually like reduce your sick days in the building yeah. and it goes through like what's the data that needs to be captured to do it and then what are the devices and systems that you need to get to that point. It gives you like not just the recipe but also like the method for the cake that you're after. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Uh, so the next one is, what have, oh, sorry, if I can read properly. What have you seen grow significantly over the last few years in the smart building industry? Given your role and the jobs that you've had, what have, what have you seen? The big two things are probably mobile apps and then platforms. Mobile apps, I think, have been difficult for buildings. I still struggle with what exactly like is the value beyond just like another thing that I have to log into that might tell me if the tube's down or not that I could probably get from other sources. Yeah. I haven't yet seen anything that I find particularly compelling that ties together like the functionality of your space, uh, if that's like messing with the lights, the temperatures, uh, room access, being able to find colleagues. It's almost at this, uh, oh, well, it's a nice new development. Of course it needs a mobile app. And it doesn't go yeah. kind of much further than that. And we've discussed that in the yes, modules. we do. Uh, and then the other side is probably around platforms. The understanding that there's uh, this bit of middleware or almost glue that's missing in buildings to tie together all of those systems and everything that goes from how you acquire the information that you want to try and capture, if that is like your air quality, your space utilization, what energy you're using on a particular bit of kit, doing something with it, visualizing it, or even automating some of the actions. Yeah. It's um, yeah, the first proper bit of glue that we've got for this data, and um, that it has, has been growing massively. And again, it's we talk about some architectures, how they're put together, and what you're looking for in the course. And, and I do know a good platform that does that middleware piece. <laughs> Uh, so w what advice would you give someone who is wanting to make their building smart? Uh, being very clear about what the value is and the reason that you're doing it. Um, you can't just buy a use case. It's not that simple. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you should start with what data will give you enough uh, ammunition to make the change that you think's there. Have like a bunch of hypotheses about what you can make better and then the data will help you to prove it and perhaps even do something about it. 
uh, I would then say make sure you've got a really robust business case that yeah. you've built out yeah. uh, so that you can track the value against it in the future because that will basically be how you prove whether or not the whole thing was worth it anyway uh, and then have some really good relationships with the people that are going to install your equipment because we're at the point in the industry where like the normal general contractors that you've been using don't know like how to get this stuff in they think yeah. it's a big risk they'll do what they can to value engineer it out um, and you're going to need your vendors to really step up here and almost be your digital contractor so if you've got someone who's doing your bricks and mortar you're going to need somebody that then does your software and your code to get the stuff that they've embedded in the bricks and mortar to actually work yeah someone like Avanti as an example so exactly. I, I say to people it's a journey right it's you can't just turn it on and make it smart overnight it is a journey choose, as you said choose the best ROI case that you can and I, I read an article the other day where someone said it's a marathon not a sprint and, and it really is I, I think one of the most important parts as well is having a, a, the right partner and it's, you won't just have one partner in this you'll, you'll have a couple you might have a middleware partner like us you'll have a preferred hardware vendor maybe or but generally you need multiple but then you need someone to give you some guidance and management, someone like you and your role in Arcadis. That is the most important part. People should do what they're good at and not try and do everything. But this is a this is a big journey, right? This is not an overnight journey. And sometimes it's a hard sell for people mm -hmm. to try and get in. So something that, the good thing is, everything we've ever done, and you've probably seen this as well, the, the ROI is rapid. It's not a three, five, 10 year ROI. It's six nine twelve months depending on how big and crazy you're going but generally it's less than a year right so if people choose those and they start in that one place whether it's reducing energy or whether it's do i need this much space so measuring occupancy and capacity it's picking one finding a good middleware platform picking the partners and then going on that journey i think is it, and people will be doing this for the next five years easily right it's 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 a, it's a big piece, I mean, especially if you have a large estate, like 100 buildings. You know, some of the big landlords in the world, Brookfield, have got like 600 buildings or more. I think they've got more, almost a thousand. That's not an overnight. No. That's not an overnight piece of work, like putting new wireless access points in. So, and the the business case sort of timelines that you were talking about, the counterintuitively, the reason that stuff is so slow and hesitant to get going is because they sound too good to be true <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. people's guts tell them well if it sounds too good it probably it is. is yeah and because they've never like studied any of the stuff to do with like how the software works and it just even like the way you deliver like physical things versus digital things is entirely different and that's why it is so counterintuitive so without that like fundamental understanding you're never going to trust it because your gut says no yeah exactly right and, and actually some of the ROI business cases that we've had, people are like, I don't believe that. Well, go and speak to the customer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's pretty simple. Uh, so this is one that people get asked a lot, uh, and, and actually it's quite a good question, but I, I'm interested in your answer for this one because this, this actually came from someone who knew that I was going to talk to you. So someone we both know. Uh, so what is the benefit of creating a smart building slash smart city? Apart from ROI, what's the what? What are some of the benefits? The big benefits, because there there are some touchy feely ones. Mm -hmm. But but what are some of the big the big benefits? The first one I'd say is probably energy. I cannot see another way of starting off to get to net zero without making changes to your building. You could just like tweak how it runs at the minute. Yeah. I've not seen a case where HVAC analytics doesn't do about twenty five percent savings on energy. So if you've got a hope in hell of meeting your uh, net zero target start with some proper software that will do some engineering calcs on how the kit in your ceiling is currently performing and do something about it. The second one would probably be space. In a world where we don't know who's going to turn up to the office, uh, when, what kind of spaces they need, how on earth can you manage your workplace if you don't know what's going on when, things aren't bookable, what actually happened, or even the like How many people are in? Exactly. So we, without that, like you I think you know that's why you need a smart building. And then thirdly, is to manage all the stuff around um, convenience. When like, our expectations of the office, uh, we're now competing with like people's homes who have got like really nice setup. Um, I can, you know, Amazon will deliver me a trampoline tomorrow, but it takes like five working days for a particular requisition at the office to like get the printer fixed. Like none of it makes sense. And I think 
when you also then build in the health and well-being piece to sort of prove that my air is great or that you clean whatever surface or that the things that you're providing me are actually going to be like supportive of whatever it is that my Apple Watch is tracking, um, it's a lot to go up against. So I'd say um, sustainability, space, and then things for people. Yeah. And I think that the last part, the, the wellness piece, I was talking to a lady this morning who may come and help us at Metricus. She's been working on ESG for years. She's been working on ESG before ESG was, was a thing, right? Or, or it was cool, or people were targeted on it. Salesforce had just announced their execs are being, you know, paid on on ESG targets. That that is that is a big one, right? Because when you're at home, you just open a window, cold or hot. You open a window. You can make it as comfortable as you like at home because you can make all the changes yourself. In the office, it's a little bit different. Uh, and, and that that's one of the big ones that, that people don't want to come back if it's hot and stuffy and uncomfortable in an office let alone if they've got a great desk and a great furniture and a great view if it's hot and stuffy and you feel like crap your performance goes down mm -hmm. so and if at home you can get up you can go in the backyard or you can go on your balcony or you can go for a walk around the block whatever you can do that that's one of the re that for me I think that's one of the biggest ones yeah that, and, and that's that, that's the one that's the one that has to be tackled but also it could be one of the ones with the biggest benefit as well the energy tick in the box reduce your cost you know reduce your space you know it, it's actually really interesting some of our, our customers were already doing this before covid then no one did it during covid but now everyone's coming back i mean i walked across london bridge which is just outside the window uh yesterday on, and it was as busy as it was before mm. lockdown right it's great to see although i'm used to having london bridge to myself and the trains to myself which is highly annoying now now that there are other people back on them that I think is one of the biggest ones. And, and the benefit for the company, happy people, more performance, happier customers, more revenue, tick, tick, tick in the box. So, exactly. Uh, one more before there's a couple of quick fire ones. Uh, how can people sign up to Smart Building Bootcamp, most importantly, and how do they get on, how do they get at it? They can go to the website, smartbuildingbootcamp.com. And simply That's sign up. Exactly, yeah, there'll be a button on the London pen. Nice. Uh, so, everybody, Matt Marson, Arcadis, and Smart Building Bootcamp, yeah. thank you very much for joining me. But before Thanks. I let you go, uh, I've been asked to answer you some quick five questions, okay. which we, which I'm being told we can't take forever, because I'm. this one's called the PropTech Ramble, because I can just talk ears up a donkey. <laughs> so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions, Matt. First job. Ah, um, at the investment bank at HSB, sir. Electrician. So yours is a little bit better. Uh, when, when and where are you most productive? Uh, oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> it's a really oh, good question. I don't know. Uh, to be fair, in the office, provided I'm not gossiping. Yeah. Yeah. Same. <laughs> At home, it's a nightmare. Uh, your favourite place that you've worked in? Oh, I'm biased. It's the dock in Dublin. World's most connected building. Loads of fun. Uh, when you're not working, how do you spend your time? I know it's not baking bread because no. you did smart building boot camp. Exactly. <laughs> Probably listening to house music. Yeah. Uh, do you think, and this is, this is an interesting question, so I, I know we're supposed to be quick here, but people ask this all the time and I get asked this and I ask people this. Do you think every building should be smart? No. Why not? It's not appropriate for some things. Like, so if I go to St. Paul's Cathedral, I don't want loads of sensors blinking at me. That's not the point of that space. Yeah. Yeah. It's for where you can make real-time changes on, because you've got a reasonable population that like, matters to how it runs. The purpose of St. Paul's is not to be efficient. Correct. I agree with that 100%. I'm not saying that's correct because that is the correct answer, but I agree. <laughs> because it, it is warehouses, offices, factories, industrial, you know, prolonging the life of equipment. If we look at the circular economy, we just throw stuff out. We normally swear, but I said throw stuff out. So yeah, I'd agree. So last one. Knowing what you know now, what advice would you give your younger self? The fights were worth it. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Matt. Lovely to have you. Thank you. Thanks for coming along. And everybody, don't forget, smartbuildingbootcamp.com. Sign up, learn all about smart buildings. If you're in the space already, you should do it because there's a lot of valuable information. If you're just coming into it, or you're starting your journey, or you're being asked about smart buildings and you want to know a little bit more about it and get educated, smartbuildingbootcamp.com. Thanks, everybody.